Now let's see the post laryngeal part of uh, forget development. As I said, esophagus, stomach, and part of the duodenum will be given by the pre post laryngeal part of esophagus, post laryngeal part of forget. Now, before going to that, I just want you to get oriented to the uh, the environment which is present inside the thorax as well as in the abdomen. So it is a lateral view I'm going to draw. You can imagine, okay. The esophagus, as I said, from the post laryngeal region, the esophagus starts and it just comes like this, you know. And from there, what we have, we have stomach, right? The fusiform dilatation. It is going to develop. Okay, this is for just orientation. And after that, we have the duodenum, right? Okay, till this level, stop. This is our esophagus. Now, what is present ventrally and dorsally? to the forget. Ventrally, we have mesogastria for stomach. Dorsally, we have dorsal mesogastria for stomach. Do we have any uh, structure as like what I said uh, for esophagus? No. We have only the dorsal meso esophagus is present in the for esophagus. So only the esophagus attached with the posterior wall of abdomen, a posterior wall of uh, the thorax uh, through dorsal mesoesophagus. So this uh, is present only in the dorsal region. In the ventral region, we don't have such kind of structure because we have a development of uh, the lung, lung buds. So the lung buds starts from where? Uh, laryngeal diverticulum. So laryngeal diverticulum appears here, isn't it? Uh, so using different color, I'll show you the laryngeal diverticulum. So it will just, it will be starting like this uh, and it has got a two developing buds like this future lung the heart will be coming just anterior to it so lung and either side of that will get uh, i mean heart on either side will get a uh, lung initially we don't have a separation partition between the uh, thorax and abdomen so there will be a communication that is called coelomic duct so later it will be closed by a, a diaphragm. The part of the diaphragm is developed from septum transversum. So that septum transversum will be seen just below the developing lung. So septum transversum will be seen here. So in the septum transversum, we have just above that, we have development of heart and within the septum transversum that is going to give rise to ventral mesogastrium. This is the ventral mesogastrium. The development of the liver occurs. So blindly you can say the development of the liver happens here. Just imagine this is anterior wall of abdomen. So this is anterior wall. This is posterior wall of abdomen and thorax. Because we don't have partition now. It is a common cavity, right? So now this anterior wall, which is attached with the ventral mesogastrium and posterior wall, mesoesophagus and mesogastrium. Isn't it? So, you just consider only the esophagus. The post laryngeal portion elongates, post laryngeal portion of the esophagus, uh, post laryngeal portion of the forget elongates. 
as the lung develops, as the stomach develops, uh, it elongates uh, and it forms esophagus. Initially, what happens? Uh, the lining epithelium which proliferates and it narrows the lumen of esophagus. But it is not completely obliterating the lumen, it just narrows the lumen of esophagus. Later on, the cells, the proliferated cells undergo degeneration and it recanalizes. So now you will get an esophagus. Initially, it is lined by columnar cells only. Later, it will be converted into non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium that is called metaplasia. Outer to that, we have several layers, you know, the scale, the esophagus is got a mucosa, muscularis mucosa, serosa layers, mucosa lining epithelium. What about the other layers? The muscular layer which is developed from the splanchnopleuric layer of mesoderm, which actually covers the the entire GID. So, smooth muscle which is from splanchnopleuric layer of mesoderm. The upper portion is uh, skeletal muscle. Middle portion is a mixed and the lower one third is purely it is a, a smooth muscle. So, skeletal as well as smooth muscle you can encounter in esophagus. Okay. So, Esophagus elongates and the cells proliferates, almost obliterate the lumen, then recanalization happening, that is death cell, cell death happens and recanalization happens, then finally you will get the esophagus. Esophagus only dorsally it is attached with the mesoesophagus that disappears and it absorbs, the, then the esophagus will be pushed towards the posterior, I mean the dorsal uh, portion of the thorax. That is where you can see the esophagus in the posterior mediastinum of uh, the thorax. Okay, due to the development of the heart as well as lung, it will be pushed posterior. Then what are the uh, applied uh, congenital malformations you can encounter here? As I said, uh, this is a uh, laryngeal diverticulum. So, when the laryngeal diverticulum happens, it is going to form a trachea. We have a septum in between the esophagus and the laryngeal diverticulum. That is called a tracheoesophageal septum. The tracheoesophageal septum has to develop. If any deficiency in this tracheoesophageal septum results in what? Uh, there will be communication between the trachea and the esophagus. So, this condition is called tracheoesophageal fistula. If you communicate with this, what would happen? There would be a fistula, communication between the two cavities. So, whatever you eat, it will go to your respiratory tract. So, this is called tracheoesophageal fistula. It is due to the absence or failure of a development of a tracheoesophageal septum. Anything apart from that? What is cardiospasm? Achalasia cardia. The lower end of the esophagus in the between the muscular layer and the, between the in the in, uh, just outside the mucosal layer we have submucosal plexus and between the muscular layer and myendric plexus, the absence of these two results in neuromuscular incoordination. So, failure of development of these plexus. So, what would happen? There will be incoordination between the peristalsis and opening of the lower sphincter, esophageal sphincter. So, when the peristalsis happens, so the lower esophageal sphincter used to relax then only the food can enter into the stomach but in this case it will not happen so that is called cardio spasm spasm or achalasia cardia next applied embryology is uh, when i was explaining about the development of the esophagus i said proliferation of the lining epithelium right it actually 
uh, almost obliterates the canal. Then how the esophagus develops, how the diameter is restored, the canal recanalization, isn't it? If failure of recanalization, failure of disappearance of the uh, uh, proliferated cells results in what? Narrowed lumen of esophagus. So that condition is called esophageal atresia. So narrowed lumen. So what would happen? You cannot eat anything. So baby will be vomiting everything when you, when you take any food. So that condition is called acali sorry, it's an esophageal atresia. Okay. So the three conditions we have discussed, what are the conditions? First thing, tracheoesophageal septum failure. That results in tracheoesophageal Fistula. Next condition is achalasia cardia. The third one is uh, esophageal atresia. So these are the applied embryology related to the esophagus. The next discussion is about the stomach. Now let us discuss about the development of stomach. As I said, the post laryngeal foregut is going to develop stomach after the esophagus. So in the lower portion of the esophagus, a small fusiform dilatation happens that is going to form stomach. So we have uh, for your orientation, uh, this is the ventral wall, this is the dorsal wall, this is our esophagus and the lower portion it dilates to form uh, stomach, isn't it? Then it continues as uh, duodenum. This is anterior ventral wall, this is posterior dorsal. So when I was explaining about the development of the uh, esophagus, I was telling about the dorsal mesoesophagus. So the esophagus attached with the posterior, uh, posterior thoracic wall with the dorsal mesoesophagus. But what about the stomach? We have ventral attachment as well as dorsal attachment, right? The ventral attachment is uh, ventral mesogastrium. The ventral mesogastrium is uh, developed from septum transversum. So septum transversum gives rise to ventral mesogastrium. And same way, we have dorsal mesogastrium also present. So when the stomach when uh, the lower portion of the uh, esophagus dilates, that is a fusiform dilatation, it actually forms a ventral border and dorsal border. So the fusiform dilatation has got a ventral border and dorsal border. And right surface, left surface. The ventral border is less concave. The dorsal border of the stomach, it actually uh, grows rapidly than the ventral border and forms a more concave structure. So I mean the convexity of the stomach. So if you see in the cut section, you will get uh, the stomach, how it is attached with the anterior abdominal wall, how it is attached with the posterior abdominal wall. In a lateral view, the anterior border, it forms a less curve. The posterior border is more curved than the anterior border. So the posterior border forms a greater curvature of the stomach. Anterior border is less curved, so it is called a lesser curvature of the stomach. Isn't it? And we have two ends. The cardiac end and the pyloric end. The cardiac end where uh, the stomach meets esophagus. 
and the pyloric end where the duodenum meets the stomach isn't it so due to the development of uh, rapid enlargement of uh, the posterior curvature it pushes the pylorus anterior but in the abdomen when you take a, a dissection when you see you open the abdomen how would you see the stomach stomach has got an anterior surface antero uh, superior surface postero inferior surface isn't it we have right border left border for the stomach then during development we have anterior border and posterior border so what is going to happen to the stomach stomach is connected anteriorly with ventral mesogastrium posteriorly with dorsal mesogastrium how it is going to turn so when it turn only it can form a anterior posterior surface right and left border right so in the cut section transverse section i'll explain how the rotation taking place in the stomach so the now stomach is anteriorly attached with the ventral mesogastrium posteriorly with the dorsal mesogastrium what else you can see in the ventral mesogastrium apart from uh, uh, the two layers so the development of the liver happens so if development of the liver if i draw here this is the development of the liver just a schematic like that and uh, dorsally in the dorsal mesogastrium we have one more structure nothing but spleen going to appear here so liver in the ventral mesogastrium spleen in the dorsal mesogastrium not only spleen we have one more small structure which actually comes from uh, the second part of the duodenum that is nothing but a small uh, extension from here uh, what is this uh, do you know what is this uh, this is nothing but dorsal bud of pancreas in the dorsal mesogastrium then where is the ventral bud ventral bud will be coming here from the from the liver bud ventral bud comes so in the ventral mesogastrium we have the ventral bud of pancreas and uh, the liver bud liver bud is going to form uh, the liver in the dorsal mesogastrium spleen and dorsal bud of pancreas so now the rotation is going to happen where now you you are going to focus only on the stomach not the duodenum i am not coming to the duodenum this is for your orientation only so we we'll, we can discuss about the liver the development of the liver pancreas duodenum and as well as spleen together later so first of let me draw the cross section of abdomen just a uh, draw uh, just to consider this is uh, liver behind which we have uh, stomach and behind that we have just consider this as a spleen okay this is ventral dorsal that is anterior and posterior so you have a liver here this is stomach this is spleen now this is covered by as i said uh, anterior abdominal wall from there we have ventral mesogastrium covers the stomach and this is the dorsal mesogastrium and it lines the abdomen like this like this so now what i am going to do you just uh, get oriented this is anterior abdominal wall okay from there we have first liver okay 
you can see first liver in the ventral mesogastrium then stomach then spleen spleen is present in the dorsal mesogastrium so this is ventral mesogastrium this is dorsal mesogastrium in the dorsal mesogastrium spleen in the ventral mesogastrium liver now the rotation is going to happen how the rotation is going to happen whether it is a clockwise rotation anti clockwise rotation 90 degree or 180 degree now the stomach has got anterior and posterior border right and left surfaces now the stomach is undergoing 90 degree clockwise rotation due to which what happens uh, the liver occupies the right side spleen occupies the left side and the stomach comes in between so in the next picture if I draw anterior and this is posterior in which uh, so using the same color for a better orientation this is our liver right this is our liver This is our stomach. This is stomach. And this is spleen. This is our spleen. So now what is going to happen due to the rotation, you can see that this is anterior, posterior, right, left. The liver has come to the right, isn't it? This is liver. Liver has come to the left. The spleen has come to the uh, liver has come to the right, and the spleen has come to the left. So here, this is right side. This is left side. For this diagram, this is left side. This is right side. So liver is on the right side. Spleen coming to the left side. Now, if I draw the peritoneal reflection, this would be like you start from here just come here over this covering the stomach covering the spleen like this and the picture would be like this you can ask me sir why you have drawn like this i'll explain this is how after rotation the picture would be Okay, so this is liver, stomach and spleen. If you see closely, due to the 90 degree rotation, 90 degree clockwise rotation, the anterior border, so called the lesser curvature has come to right side. The posterior border, otherwise known as the greater curvature, now it has turned to the left side. So this is greater curvature, this is a left cutter, lesser curvature and this is anterior surface and this is posterior surface. One more thing you can include, what is that? Two nerves. Uh, stomach is supplied by vagus, right? We have right vagus, left vagus. Just consider this is right side, so this is right vagus, this is left vagus. In this picture, where can you find? This is the right vagus. This is your left vagus. Agree? Because due to the 90 degree rotation, uh, the right coming to posterior, left uh, gone to anterior. So, in the cross section, in the uh, after opening abdomen, if you see any anterior trunk uh, present in the anterior portion of the stomach, uh, that is called left vagus so anterior trunk otherwise known as left vagus posterior trunk is right vagus due to the 90 degree rotation of stomach and due to the rotation if you see here liver has appeared in the ventral mesogastrium right portion of the ventral mesogastrium is present between the abdominal wall and the liver this is called the falciform ligament right and portion of the uh, ventral mesogastrium present between the liver and the stomach see this portion 
this is lesser lesser momentum this is our falciform falciform ligament and between these two this is called lesser momentum okay now the entire area of dorsal mesogastrium is called greater momentum but we can't say that is a greater momentum because we have uh, different parts the one which the portion of the dorsal mesogastrium attached with the diaphragm is called the gastrophrenic ligament this is called gastrophrenic and we have taken section at this level that is why you can see the spleen and here you can encounter the development of the kidney development of the kidney so now the dorsal mesogastrium most portion of the dorsal mesogastrium is going to form what uh, the greater momentum a part of it between the stomach and the spleen this portion is called gastrosplenic this ligament is called gastrosplenic and between the spleen and the kidney this ligament is called the lino-renal ligament leno renal ligament now you can understand so in the cadaver if you cut and see you will see all these ligaments how do they come from where do they come all from the ventral and the dorsal meso gastrium only the fusiform dilatation of the lower part of the pre post laryngeal part of foregut forms a stomach the lesser curvature anterior border greater curvature posterior border due to the 90 degree rotation the anterior border become uh, uh, the uh, lesser curvature on the right side the posterior border become uh, the left side greater curvature and uh, the portion between the liver and the stomach is called lesser momentum and between the spleen and the stomach it is called greater momentum so between the liver and spleen and the kidney it is called the leno renal ligament and the portion alone is called gastrosplenic ligament so these are the peritoneal folds you can encounter in the abdomen when you do dissection so you can understand how it has developed